Amen. Hey man, you can yes, yo, you can have your seats. Have your seats, have your seats. You can have your seats. Y'all can have your seats. And we just gonna do a little thing, a little, little different this morning. It, again, amen. Uh, yeah. So, uh, how many of y'all like to play games? You don't? You do play games? Okay, we have one here. Dun 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 dun. I needed a helper, but I'm helping out here this morning. Amen. So what we have right here is called culture tags, okay? I love playing games during the holiday season, okay? Uh, whether it, it's spades, y'all spade in the spades, players in the house, dominoes. Y'all, we in church, it's okay. You ain't gambling, it's okay. Family feud, family feud, monopoly, you like monopoly, bingo, charades. Solitaire, yeah. amen. In the hot, doing interactive games, it, it's just fun. It just come, it's good to come together and um, just laugh and play games. So this is church. 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 Yeah, let's go. Y'all got no, y'all, I don't have no prizes for you. I'm just saying. Let's go. Let's go. Church. Something we say in church. Something that we say in church all the time. See, I don't have my helper with me, so I have to come a little down, a little farther. This is something that we say at, at church all the time. T T T S T D. <laughs> we ain't gonna play with two of these, look like. Y'all can just yell it out. It's okay right now. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. This is something we say in church all of the time. In our culture. It ain't that. It ain't Lord have mercy. Yep. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it ain't Lord have mercy. You give up? Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Everybody should know this one. Because we say it, well, we sing it a lot of times. Y'all can't see it. It's an I, it's a K, it's an I, it's a W, it's a T, it's a B. No. No, I ain't see a W in there. Yeah, it is, but no. It's something, if, it's something that we um, typically sing during communion time. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I, she said it, Carla said it, she said it, she said it low, but she, she was sure. I know it was the blood. This is something that we incorporate that we should be happy to do. No, it's an I, it's an O, it's a T. I, O, T. I, it's part of our, end of our worship time. Huh? I owe it to God. It's no G. It's only I owe it to him. Ain't no H. <laughs> it's during the end of our worship. Um, give y'all another hint. Um, Elder Johnson normally deal, does this. Huh? What, what's it said? I-O-T. Well, we said somebody, I heard somebody. Offering time. That's right. It's offering time. Come on, church. You was in the neighborhood. This is one that we say all the time when it's, if it's not the truth. I know the devil, I, the devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. Okay, I'm just going to get that's it. We're going to stop right there. I don't want to take too much of your time. But I just love playing games because it, it, it helps to bring out laughter and help our mind to think games. It helps us to think. It's interactive. Okay, by a show of hands, uh, how many sports fans do we have in the house? Sports fans, sports fans. Okay, okay. How? I see you, brother JB. 
this is, a, <laughs> this is a very exciting time for sports fans because number one, it's football season, right? We saw an awesome game yesterday arrival. My nephew uh, from Fayetteville, Tavion, he's just a sophomore. But Tavion, he was um, Fayetteville's number one, 7A, uh, 7A school. And Bentonville is uh, always also in northwest Arkansas. They were the underdogs. And to see my nephew make those plays, and he's just a sophomore. You know, I watched it live. I, weren't, I wasn't able to go. But just to see him, it just brought some, woo! I was hoping to study for the world. I'm up there, yes, go! Yeah! From my stands on my living room, amen? Because it's good when we can come together and have, be able to enjoy games. In, in February, we'll, it'll be Super Bowl, right? Right? So, so sports fan. I know some of y'all know, but yeah, that's what it is. Okay. And then in March, you have March Madness, correct? Yeah. Oh, what is? Okay. It's her birthday. You can clap for that in March. <laughs> March I, I know. Okay, we're going to wait. Y'all go wait till. You, okay. We're going to wait till March and show y'all look down the screen. <laughs> Okay, then from April to June, there's the NBA playoffs, correct? And in all of these leagues, there are champions and there are winners, right? So now all of these teams that win or make it to the championship game in whatever sport there is, go Cowboys! Whatever step there is, sport there is, they have one thing in common. They have all sat down before the season has even started, and they came up with a game plan. They came up with a game plan. Now, all of the teams in all the leagues have a game plan that is sometimes less successful <laughs> than the champions, but they all have a game plan with goals, right? And they all want to attain and reach these goals. All of the teams that win a championship only have success because they lay out a game plan they set goals and they follow them. Is that correct? Okay. So today, Joshua 1, 1 through 9. Let's go there. Joshua 1. Y'all don't have to stand. 1 through 9. And I, I like the New King James Version. If you could put the New King James Version up there. I'm sorry. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord... Okay, y'all hear that? After the death of Mo Moses, Joshua, he was the servant of the Lord. It came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place, ooh, this, this, I, I felt that when I saw every place, that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses, you know, sometimes you, 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 you living on the prayers of, 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 a prayer of, somebody, of somebody else. And not because you did something, because somebody else did something. God promised it to Moses, so it's still falling on you. From the wilderness, when, who in, sometimes we be in the wilderness, and we can't see our way out. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your, man, that is awesome, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. <laughs> As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. That's a promise. I mean, it's, it's right there, right? I will not leave you nor forsake you. Is that, is that what it's saying? Woo! Be strong <laughs> and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance. Oh, Colin, you shall divide an inheritance, the land which I swore 
Because God, he doesn't lie. He's not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. To their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from, the, from it to the left hand or to the right, that you may prosper wherever you go. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but what? You shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then will make for I'm sorry, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Last verse. Have I not commanded you? Be strong. That's the third time he said that. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm tripping. I'm sorry, because I, I mean, this, this felt good to me already when I started studying. I mean, I had to wake back up. Lord, Lord woke me back up at 4.13 a.m. to still meditate on this same word that he had already given me. I'm like, what you say, Lord? Okay, I couldn't even go back to sleep. I've been up since 4.15 a.m. in this word, because it was good to me. It was just good to me, because the word is true. It's so good. Amen? So today, for a text, we're saying left, right, or center. Setting a spiritual game plan. Amen? Setting a spiritual game plan. Amen. Woo. So, as kingdom men or women, or Jesus followers, in order for us to be successful in our spiritual walk, we have to have a game plan. We have to have a game plan. Some of us have set a game plan for our careers, where we want to be in five to ten years, right? You know, that's all right, that's all right. How much money we want to make? Ooh, okay, how much money I want to make, how much I make, that's two separate things. But how much money I want to make. <laughs> Some of us even have set a financial game, a uh, game plan to, to buy our first house or set a game plan for the retirement. Sister Carol, she set a game plan for retirement way back. Lady, I, I'm a, I think I'm going to retire next year in October. I said, girl, next year, okay. Sister Chazelda, <laughs> Sister Chazelda, <laughs> I remember when she was saying she was going to retire. Lois done to retire twice, she, but she said you can't retire twice. I know, but girl, she retired and she went back and she go retire, for real, for real. Sister Diane has retired, amen? So everybody has said, a, put a game. Sister Loretha, I see it, yeah, Sister Loretha retired. It, who else? Because I'm, I'm, y'all inspiring me. Keep inspiring me. Okay, Ella, she went back. She, she, she retired, but she went back. I think when I retire, I'm just going to retire. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I am. Oh. Yeah, but it's, it's good that they set, put a game plan in motion to retire. Amen. Some of us had, had a game plan. Uh, plan for our families. When we gonna get married? You put a game plan. I'm gonna get married. I'm gonna have 200 guests, and my dress gonna be white, and this gonna be the game plans. You put game plans in motion. How many kids we gonna have? I'll never forget. Kara was. We were talking about this on last Sunday. Kara and I. I said, shoot, yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 my high school yearbook right now. I'd already have one <laughs> by the time I got my yearbook. But I always said I don't want but two kids, and I wanted my oldest child to be a boy. I said that. Yeah, I had plans. I ain't planned to have them as young as I did, but I did. It happened, it did, I went, I saw, and yeah. But I had a game plan because you have to have plans in life. And a lot of times, that's what we do. We put plans in action because we want to obtain something. How many kids we will have? And as they got older, our children, we even have a game plan for their future. Whether it's getting them through college, amen? What we gonna do? How we gonna help them go to college? Is that a plan? Or just a game plan, getting them out your house? Mm -hmm. You want them to go, but they can come back. Go on, live life. Go on, you got to experience life, but you can always come back home. That's what we say, huh? <laughs> amen. But those are plans that we have 
in life, game plans. But how many of you all have actually set a spiritual game plan for where you are in your walk with Christ? What I mean is that how am I going to glorify God in all that I do, in my daily walk, in my expectation, wherever I work, play, church, community, how am I going to advance the kingdom? What kind of plans am I putting in motion to excel God's glory? Amen? So today, we're going to look at the book of Joshua. We're going to talk about Joshua's game plan, okay? Joshua did a lot of big things for God. Whew, he did a lot. But he didn't just start out as a leader in Israel. No, he didn't. Um, he didn't just overnight become the general of God's army. He did not. He, was a, uh, he, was, he led them, but he was not immediately the general because we know at the beginning of the scripture it said, he, God spoke and he said, my servant Moses has died, right? But he did lead them into the promised land. God had a game plan for Joshua. And a beautiful, I mean, for jo yeah, Joshua. And a beautiful thing is that he followed it. Because a lot of times when we set plans, we don't always follow. We want to go to the left, to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right. Rather than following what God has already, because with our natural eyes, we, we, we want to do things our own way most of the time. Instead of doing what God said. Because, you know, God would take that thing that seemed foolish to confound the wise. So it doesn't make sense because his ways are not what? Never. And we already know that the enemy is not going to tell you to, to do anything great. Ever. Ever. So first, first, Joshua was a slave in Egypt. He was a slave. He was just one of the millions that uh, followed Moses out of Egypt, across, across the desert through the part of the Red Sea. We already know that story, right? Okay. Um, that, that, and that's one of my, whenever I'm in a, in a dark place or a valley, I always say, God, you the same God who parted the Red Sea and you allowed the children of Israel to walk through the Red Sea and their feet weren't even, well, it didn't say, record that it was muddy. Well, did it say? I don't know. It was dry land, so look, just think about the ocean. He parted the Red Sea, and they were able to walk through, millions of people walked through, and their feet weren't even muddy. Yeah, that's the same God. That's what I say. Because so he, that was a game plan. God had a game plan for for Joshua. He became a servant or an aide to Moses. And in the book of Numbers, it, it refers to him. Um, he, Joshua was the son of Nun. Nun, N-U-N. He was the son. Joshua was the son of Nun, but he, and who had been Moses' aide since he was a child. Isn't that something? So he followed, he was, in, he was already following, looking, in, looking at the pattern. He was already watching Moses as a little bitty child. So God saw something. He saw the best in me. Because we, sometimes we despise little kids. We despise little children, but you never know what God is going to do and how he's going to use them. Amen? So that's why when they want to, whatever they want to do for the Lord, I let them. Come on. Because they do a whole lot of other stuff out there. Amen? Third, he was an explorer. As God told, Mo, Mo, told Moses to send some men to explore the land of Canaan. Now, ooh, I don't want to go there. It'd be all day. But he told them to go, told them to, some men, and, and one of those men was Joshua, to, to go explore the land, and that land in Canaan, and that land was flowing with a milk and honey. That's where they were going. You know, most of them, he said, I'm a, I promise you a land. I promise you some, you can go, you're going to, Possess the land that's flowing milk and honey. But you know, the children of Israel, a lot of them died in Egypt. I mean, died in the wilderness because they were disobedient. And even Moses didn't even see it, right? So he, who has the mantle? Joshua. Joshua has the mantle. Uh, he was one of the 12 men that were chosen as the leader of this tribe. And fourth, he became a spokesman. See, 10 of the returning men, because again, it was 12. It was 12 men that was supposed to go in and spy out the land and come back with a report. Ten of them came back and brought fear and doubt to the people. Oh, God. I'm just saying, because fear, 
Fear and doubt keeps you out. Y'all know fear grips you. Why, why are we so fearful when God already told us he's going to do this and then we're so fearful to, to believe what he said he's going to do? What, does that make any sense? Mm-mm. Does it make any sense? But they brought, 10 of these men brought, brought fear and doubt to the people. But Joshua and Caleb, amen, they stood up. They followed God's game plan and told the people that the land was good and God promised it to us. He promised it, right? And he warned them not to go to the left, not to go to the right. I'm just saying. He warned them not to rebel against what God had already said. And do not fear the people. That's going to the, to the left, you're rebelling. To the right, you you putting fear in them. Because God... They, just, 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 it's left, right, center. Just stay in the center. Just keep your mind focused. Just stay in the center. He already promised you stay in the center because he already told us in his word, you just stay in the center. Lord, the Lord our God is with us. And if he is with us, we shall not fear. Just stay right there. Stay in the center. But in their doubt and fear, the people want to stone them. He wanted, they wanted to stone Joshua. But, for his faith, he was faithful. God spared him. Amen? He spared him. As 10 of the 12 men, they, they were sent out to the land, and they came out doubting what God had already promised them. It's, he already, I, I don't get it. I already promised them, and they began to spread the doubt among the people. And those 10, guess what? They were struck with a plague, and they died. Y'all better stick with the plan and stop doubting God. When he's, stop going to the left, to the right, trying to figure it out. It don't make sense because God said something. Stop trying to figure it out. If God said, just stay in the center. Keep your eyes on the prize. Amen. Right there in the center. He became a conqueror after Moses died. And he was given the task of leading the people into the promised land. Again, we're going to, uh, Joshua 1. After the death of Moses, because I like reading the word, it's just good to me. After the death of Moses, the death, uh, yeah, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, I want you to arise and go over this Jordan, you and all these folk right here, that, that, that's still here, Right? Because if, if I got to put it in plain terms, I can, but y'all can, can, can make sense out of this. To the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. He already gave it to them. He promised it to them. <sighs> Next one. Come on. Let's go. Every place that the sole of your foot would tread upon, I have given you. As I said to Moses. So you ain't got to worry about figuring out. Well, he left and I don't know. You ain't got to figure it out. God already told Moses. You already know. You was with Moses. You have been with Moses since the beginning. Since you was a child. He promised it to you. Go. Just go. Amen. Just go. Wherever you said. From the wilderness to, the Le to this Lebanon. As far as the great river. The river Euphrates. All the land of the Hittites. And to the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. Man, that's a lot of play. That's a lot. Every, everywhere your foot tread upon is yours. God said it. What you waiting on? What you scared of? Why you doubting him? Just go. Follow the game plan. Start looking to the left and to the right and listen to what the doubters and, and the folks that discourage you. Y'all do know that there, even in the church, there are people that, that sow discord in the church to kind of try to keep you from doing and it, and it keep you from, well, you're right. But no, you're not right. If God said it, that's it. You're not right. Next. No man shall be able to stand before you all the, oh. oh. <laughs> As I was with Moses, I will be with you, too. I will not leave you. I love it when God tells me I will not leave you nor forsake me. Shoot, I'm going to need big places and spaces. I, I, shoot. You know, you because sometimes you can think you're insignificant. You can think you don't measure up. You can think you don't have it all together when you go in certain rooms and even churches. I know when I, when I became saved again, well, when, when I became uh, a first lady, 
if, if, if they call the first lady, you know, everybody want to call you, want you to be on a program, want you to MC, want you to do this, want you to speak on this, and want you to wear a hat I never wore, they want you to do this, that, and all that. And I, because just coming out, I'm young, I'm, what, 20, 20s, in my 20s? You know, you're looking at, because with the eyes and what all I've known, that's all I can go on. So you think you're insignificant. I'm like, I don't measure up. I ain't got the clothes. I don't have this. I can't speak eloquent, eloquently. Um, I don't have all these, uh, enough word in me, so I thought. Because we can make ourselves small. But if God, God don't, don't care about all them stats, that don't mean nothing but a bunch of fluff anyway. He want to know how your heart is and if you go follow the game plan. That's all it matters. That's all that matters. You just go. Even Moses, I, Moses tried to make an excuse. I, 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 I'm a man of slow speech. I can't, I, I, I can't talk. I can't I'm gonna tell, the, tell him let, 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 let people go. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But God just, you know. But look what happened. He, if, when he followed God's game plan, look what happened. Amen. So be strong and of good courage, for to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and be very courageous. Just be bold about it. You know if God told you something, he got you? I mean, seriously, if he told you to do something, do you not know? I mean, unless you don't know his voice. Ooh, ooh. Unless you don't know his voice. But if he told you something, he's got you. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my serpent, com servant, commanded you. Don't turn. Don't listen to the naysayers. Don't listen to the folk in the boat. That's what I call it when Peter was in the boat. You know, Peter say, Lord, if that's you bid me to come to you because Jesus was walking on water. Because he kept his eyes in on center. But then you had the folk in the boat. Oh, uh -uh, you better not go. You crazy. You know you can't do. I know that's what they were saying. I, come on, y'all. You better not do that. You go drink, drown all this treachery. See, you can't walk on that water going to the left, to the right, listening. That what you, that's what they were doing. I called naysayers and, and, and hate, haters. Yeah, I guess naters. Discouragers. Dis, people who uh, so discord. People who lie back, biting, all that. So I call them folk in the boat. Just go. Stay in the center of his will. Just uh, follow the game plan. Amen. My service, okay, the, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do all, uh, do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong, it's a third time, and good courage, do not be afraid nor be dismayed, <laughs> for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So a, key few, a, a few key things that I think we can draw from that scripture that made Joshua so successful in his game plan is this. First, God tells him three times. What did he tell him three times? I was wondering if y'all were listening. So shout it to me so I can know y'all heard me. Good courage, yeah, yeah. He, he told him that three times. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. And this is my command. Be strong and courageous. This is something that we all need to include in our daily walk. I don't care what you're doing, especially when you're doing something for the Lord. Just be strong and courageous, amen? In our spiritual game plan, every day we need to be strong and we need to be courageous. Because I know when I first started in ministry, because I've never, that I can remember, ever being shy. But I don't always want to take no mic and be standing before people. I don't care where I am. My heart going to get like you can hear it in the microphone. You don't just want to be out there, right? But I remember praying the prayer, Lord, I just want to be bold for you. <laughs> I'm serious. I just want to be bold for you. Use me, Lord, so I can be bold for you, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, you said that. We got to be careful what we're praying for. <laughs> Seriously, be strong and be courageous. So whatever we need, whatever we do for him, we need to follow the spiritual game plan. Amen. Whatever is at work, 
Don't be let people walk all over you if you know you're right. It's a difference in, 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 sub, in subordination, and, in, and it's a difference in just making your, your voice heard, right? You got to be strong. You be, got to be courageous. In your homes, amen, in our, in our marriages, in our community, our church, just be strong, whatever the task may be. Because God, he say, I am with you wherever you go. Not, don't be doing things maliciously now. Hmm. Out of the wrong motive. Be careful about that. The second thing is, well, every, every morning, uh, make that your declaration. Every morning you just need to wake up. Wake up with a game plan of being strong and courageous in everything you do. Just wake up. I'm, I'm strong. I'm, what's, what's the thing that they used to say? I'm, I'm strong. I'm, what is it they used to say? The, um, yeah, but something that we tell the kids, I'm, I'm, I'm smart. I'm, Lois be saying all the time, I'm smart. I'm wise. What they be saying? <laughs> Y'all don't know. Ooh, I need, Elder, we need you. I'm smart, I'm kind, I'm important. Now we're going to ask, now we're going to add, I'm strong and I'm courageous to that. Every morning, make that your declaration. Put that play into action. The second thing, if we look closely at the scriptures, for Joshua to be successful at executing God's game plan in verse 1, I mean Joshua in verse 1, after he tells him to be strong and courageous, God says, be careful to obey all the instructions that Moses gave to you. Right? That's in Joshua 1 and 7. Don't deviate to, from them. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Right? Okay. Then you will be successful in everything you do. So, but many people think that success is all about money, how much money you get. Uh-uh. That's not successful. I mean, I want some, Lord. You know, scripture says that's all things. You know, we need money to take care of stuff. But that doesn't make you successful. Because we know that the, word, the, the measure of man, man is not measured by the abundance of things. It's not about what they have, some, about the stuff that you have. A lot of people define success from a, another per, person's approval. I'm successful because somebody else pat me on the back. Mm -mm. You can work, you can be just as successful in the background. Amen? You don't have to be out front with the spotlight shine on, shine, 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 shining on you. But God defines success in a very, very different way. David, David tells Solomon this before he dies. In 1 King chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. 1 King chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. Okay. I go the way of all the earth. Be strong. Therefore, improve yourself a man. And keep the charge... In four verses, I'm sorry. And keep the charge of the Lord, your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do and wherever you turn. One more verse. And the Lord, that the Lord may fulfill his word, which he spoke concerning me, saying, if your sons... Take heed to their way, to walk before me in truth with all their heart and with all their soul. He said, you shall not lack a man on the throne of Israel. Amen. This means if they walk faithfully before me with all their heart and soul, you will never fail to have a successful on the throne of Israel. That's what us, uh, David was telling Solomon before he died. So God defines our success in pursuit of obedience to him. That's how God defines success. Not deviating to the left or to the right of his game plan for our lives. That's not what God, that's not what God wants. Are you doing everything? No, I already know the answer because I'm not. Are we doing everything? <laughs> no. Are we doing everything that we can to follow him with all your heart and soul? That was the question. It's, 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 it's yes or no. Okay. And Joe said she be trying. I mean, it's yes or no. It wasn't on the, on the test. Got yes or no. True or false. <laughs> Amen. Yes or no. 
Are you doing everything you could follow him? Well, you no. Know. Are you sticking to the game plan that God has set for your life? No. That we, we can do better, right? We all can do better to follow his game plan, a spiritual game plan. The third thing that we need to do to follow the game plan that God has for us is one simple thing. Joshua 1 and 8 says, study this book. Joshua 1 and 8. Study this book of instructions continually. Study the book of the law. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do all to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and good, right? Only then will you prosper in all your ways. When he says study this book, which day and night. How do we accomplish this even if we have our quiet time with God in the Word every day? Because I know when we, we study the Word, right? We study the Word, amen, right? Every day. Every day. How do we meditate? Thank you. Thank you for being honest. We how do we meditate on it during the day? For me, it started with scripture memory. Um, I was newly saved again. And what I wanted to do to follow God's game plan, I want to, and to grow in my relationship with him, I just started uh, memorizing as many scriptures as I could throughout the day or the week. And then what I did, I started journaling those specific scriptures that, that spoke directly to me and what it meant to me. That's how I started to, to follow his game plan or, or meditating on his word day and night. Some, I mean, meditating on his word in the day. Sometimes we, we need to replace some social media stuff with, with the word. Push, cut the TV off. Stop binge watching a bunch of shows. Stop binge watching and replace that, that with study time. Ouch. Amen. Or sleep. Sleep too much. Wake up. Get in the word. <laughs> Amen. Sometimes that's all we need to do. That's how we can grow and follow his spiritual game plan for our lives. Um, I, I, I needed this step because throughout the day, I'm, I was able to, when I began to memorize those, those scriptures and meditate on them and start journaling, then throughout my day, I was able to apply those scriptures that I had just read or, or meditated, not just read, but those scriptures that I had memorized and I had journaled about because something in that day or that week would challenge me in my, in, in my faith. So I was able to apply those, the scripture, apply his word. So that, that helped me. That helped me to follow his game plan by meditating in his word throughout the day. So I give him all the credit for who I am. Um, and how he has grown me, I, I'm, I'm confident in who I am and who I belong to. I am confident in that. Regardless of what anybody else think or say, I, I just thank God I know how he sees me and he see the best in me. Amen. He see the best in me. Amen. It allowed my heart to, to um, even give a word to others because I was able to apply the, what those scriptures that I had already just learned and I journaled. Amen. So how do you meditate on it at night? Woo! Y'all remember uh, watching any scary movies as a child? Who watched scary movies as they was, when they were a child? Just four people. Okay, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, scary movies as a child. So at night, I remember watching scary movies when, when I was a kid. And what happened most of the time is when I watched a scary movie before I went to bed, as a kid, I woke up with nightmares. Anybody? Stuff walking through the, creeping through the, <laughs> through the TV. <laughs> I don't even keep my, my, my closet door open right now just for that sight. That, that, close that closet. I don't keep nothing under my bed. You can look from one end of my bed to the other and it's clear. Ain't nobody gonna be on this bed. Nothing but some carpet. <laughs> yeah. But most of the time when I was a kid, I, I went to bed after I watched a scary movie, I had nightmares because it was the last thing I did before I went to sleep. So those images I seen were in my mind as I slept. 
The word of God should be the last thing that you meditate on and read before you go to sleep. If you do a daily devotion or just read your daily scripture, you are putting the word of God in your mind right before you go to sleep. And if that's the last thing that you do, your mind will rest on his word while it rests. Speak, you know, now you know what I do? I put the prayer on. I put God's prayer on if I want to go. So that's what's in my subconsciousness. And then I can find myself when I wake up, I say, ooh, yeah, I'm, I'm, my, my spirit is, 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 uh, is, is in agreement to whatever the, the scriptures are playing on the television because that's what I need. That's what I need. That's the game plan I need for my walk. That's how I can meditate on his word day and night. Amen? Now, this is a tough one. To complete God's plan for our lives, uh, Joshua 1 and 9, he says, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid or be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. That's tough. A lot of, because we're so fearful of stuff. We're so fearful when... You get something in the mail, you're fearful. <laughs> oh, she see, she said it. She's fearful already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know, we're fearful. Any bad news, we fearful. We be discouraged, easy to be discouraged. I know my, I'm going to tell you instantly, my stomach going to mess up. I got a nervous stomach. If I hear some bad news, I'm going to discourage. My stomach is terrible and I have to go home. Because I have a nervous stomach. And I, I, and I said, Lord, help me. I, I, and then what, what I do, I put that word on him. I say, God did not give me a spirit of fear, but a love, power, and of a sound mind. I, the, I, um, I hear my father's voice and the voice of intimidation and limitation. I choose not to follow. I have to speak those things to encourage myself to follow God's game plan. Ultimately, we know that we're not in control of what happens in this world, are we? No. We're not. We are called to be a light to this dark and scary world. So when things go wrong, we can, we can be a, a people that can stand up and be strong and of good courage and speak what God has already said about the situation. Amen? We can be the people that show God's love in, in this lost and broken and dark, hateful world. But we're fearful. We are fearful. Instead of applying his word, we, we, we are fearful. So we need to encourage people around us. Even when things go wrong, we need to encourage people. Don't, we don't need to judge. We need to pray. Amen? Stand out for loving them and not condemning them. Especially when nobody else will. Stand up and be a pillar of strength for those who need you. Just stand up. Amen? So Joshua was a mighty man of God that was able to part the river. He brought giant walls down with trumpets. He called out for the sun to stand still during battle. Man, that's awesome to me. You, I want the sun to stand still. Man, that is something. You got some power. If you tell the sun, don't move. You stand still while we fight in battle. And, 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 it, and it obeys. That is amazing. But it, it, it happened, amen? It happened. He led God's people into the promised land, and he destroyed anything and any army that he faced. Not because of who he was. It was because of his faith. It was because of his faith and unwavering obedience to the creator. And there's something, if you obey, obedience is better than sacrifice, right? It is. God had a game plan for Joshua's life, and he was faithful and obedient to all that God called him to do. So he was able to accomplish great, great, great things because the Lord was with him wherever he went. So at the beginning, I, 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 I asked you if you like to play games, right? Uh, I asked you if you were a sports fan, right? Because we know that uh, in sports, even bowling, we can take bowling. for Bowling, well, I'll, I'll go back there. But there are three things that we must do. To follow the game plan. Be strong and courageous. Check. Let me hear you. Strong and courageous. Strong and courageous. Obey and follow the word of God. Obey and the word of God. Meditate on God's word day and night. Do not be afraid or discouraged. Amen. Amen. So, what, what we, 
in, in bowling, you, it's best that when you, I, I think Carolyn was, but used to be on a bowling team. Is that correct? I, yes, and did, she said. <laughs> and when you bowl, you have to, is it two holes or three? I got nails, I probably can't bowl them. Three and three. And so when you bowling, you don't be looking to the left or to the right, right? It's best to just straight ahead in the center, and then you go, and then you put that little leg, they do that little, they little, they little Kirsty right there. They do that. And they, the best thing to do is roll that ball in the center so that you can knock down as many pins as you possibly can. That, am I right? Strike. Okay. In the center. Don't look over there unless you don't get them all. Then you want to come to the level. We ain't talking about that right now. In softball or baseball, there's a pitcher, and he's in the center of the field. Am I correct? And when he's in the center, there's a home play right there in the center, right? And all they want to do, they're focusing on, on what's in front of them. I ain't play baseball. Okay, y'all got it. They want, they're focusing on what's in the center because they want their ball to hit as far as they can so they can make it back around to home, which is in the center. Is that right? In golf, there's a little pin. I mean, they, they put their little golf ball right there on their little, what they call it? T, T. And then, well, I ain't never played, but I was seen. And what, but they're, they, they're focusing on what's in front of them. They're not looking to the left. They're not looking to the right. They take the golf, they take the golf club, and they practice, practice swing at first, you say. They ain't looking over there. They looking right there in there because they want their ball to go straight in the center, right? So I asked y'all about left. I mentioned games left, right, and center. And I have one that I like to play particularly called left, right, center. Okay. And in this left, right, center game, there's a three cubes for the church folk. You know how we at church. There are three cubes in here. One of them has a, a L on it, one of them has an R on it, and one of them has a C on it. Left, right, center. My mother-in-law loved this game because I have it in the console of my car right now because whenever I go somewhere, you know, y'all, let's play left, right, center so we can have something to do. And the ob object is you want all of it in the center because if you roll an L, you're going to have to give your cube to the left or the, to the right, whichever one you... But the object the is to see. Because we want to keep our mind focused on giving our, yeah, staying in the center. Staying in the center of God's game plan for us. Amen? I don't care how it is, how, what you're going through, we can't get there if we're looking to the left. We can't get there if we're looking to the right. We got to stay focused and keep our, mind, our eyes like a flint in the center. Stay in the center of his will. And just like Joshua, we too can have faith to tear down walls, to, to bring down giants. Amen. Because we have giants in life. And I never forget when my son was in a near fatal car accident. And it was like I was like it's, it was like a out of body experience. Okay, and then I, I went all the way back to and I shared this with him. I, I went all the way back and I said to him you know, I was a young mother. I was a young mother. So it took me back to when he was born. Thank you. And uh, my first born, it took me all the way back to my first born. And trying and striving, didn't know what to do. Just leaning and depending on, I guess, him. Um, doing the best I could, so it took me there. And I thought about his life and, and, and 
when I was in college and I was taking him to, it took me there. I was taking him to my co- to class with me when I was in college in, in Jonesboro. And how my grandmother, when I moved to, went to Texas to go to school, she didn't, wouldn't let me take him with me because that was her baby, I guess. And the things that I really, I told him, I said, son, I, I thought about, was it something that I did? You know, I, I was insignificant. I was a mother, a young mother, not knowing, doing the best I possibly could. My friends in high school used to bump him because uh, I was so uh, active in high school. And, and some of my friends, they weren't. So they would keep him at the game because I didn't want him to be a burden. I didn't want to be a burden. And I saw those things. It was just like I was just in an out-of-body experience just thinking about his life. And I said, Lord, you, I know you're not going to take him. I know you're not going to take him. Because you promised. You promised me. And I ain't going to tell you why. But you promised me that you would not take him. So, Lord, spare his life. Spare his life, but bring him. You know, kids do. You, you, you can only pray for them. That's why I was saying a lot of time we on the prayers or somebody else borrow prayers. Grandmother, you living because your grandmother's prayers or, or your, your grandmother's prayers or your mother's prayers. That's why you still there. Um. Uh, but I, I, it, it took me there. And I say, Lord, I just want to be in your will. I just want to be in the center of your will. So when Carrie had that, that accident, I was just like, I didn't know what to say. I just didn't know. I, didn't, I had no words. I had no words. And then Corey, he, 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 uh, he encouraged me. Because he said, I encouraged him. <laughs> he said, I encouraged him because I was so calm when I contacted Corey and told him. I just said, he said, lady, you just said, uh, Corey, you, you woke? I said, no, I am now because, you know, he's early. Um, well, I just want to let you know that Carrie's been in a car accident. He said, and the way you said it, lady, that gave me encouragement that you were so um, brave and 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 and, and just brave and I'm like that's not what I was feeling but I thank you because I just didn't know what to do and I I I was like Lord you taking my child you know that's what I was thinking I didn't I didn't have the words so I'm saying all that to say there are things that God wants us to do there are things that we have not done we have not followed the plan the game plan and some things, sometimes he'll, he'll tap us, ch- chastise us to get our attention to wake us up. Because he's already said, he's already told us what to do. The plan is there. He's already told us what to do. But we just are disobedient or we're discouraged or we go to the left, we go to the right, and we just don't do. And it's simple, you guys. Just follow the game plan. Just follow the game plan. Just follow the game plan. It's okay. Just follow the game plan. Because you don't have to worry about nothing. What if it was just you and him? That's why that song this morning, to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Nothing else matters. Just me and you. It's been a long time. those Those are the lyrics in that song. And if you just sit back and just think about it, Cause we're so busy doing whatever we want to do. Yes, whatever we want to do. But he has so much. He has done so much for us. He was so, he sent Jesus. Jesus went to the cross for us. The game plan. He followed the game plan. So why won't we come on and just do it? Hmm? We can do it. Amen. That's it.